Let's talk about desktops in Windows. Now you may have seen the icon in your taskbar since the early days of Windows 10 when it kind of started out looking like Princess Leia. Then it was updated later to look a bit more like a film strip when the timeline capability rolled out. And now it looks like two overlapping boxes in Windows 11. But what are desktops? And more importantly, how can you use desktops to make your demos and maybe your life even better? Well, keep watching and I'm gonna show you. So I like to think of desktops like separate rooms in your house where you can compartmentalize the different activities that you do in Windows. Now, you can open specific apps that you want in each desktop and then move between those desktops depending on what you're doing. But why would having specific rooms be better than multitasking in one large multi-purpose area or one desktop? And how does this help you then demo like a pro? Well, it's kind of like the same reason why houses aren't usually constructed to have just one large room. So I'm gonna start out by showing you the traits of a bad demo on a single desktop, and all this is running Windows 11 in this case, but it would be the same if it was running Windows 10. And if you've been to any tech conference, you've probably seen this before. You know, it always starts in PowerPoint, and our sample demo is about user account management in Microsoft 365. Now the presenter is gonna flip through a few slides, and then at some point the demos start and they hit the escape key to move out of PowerPoint full screen, then move over to the first demo and show you something. Then they go back to PowerPoint and full screen it again to show a slide or two, then another demo. And this is another browser and it's a demo logged in with a different account, so it needs to be a different browser window in our case. Then I'm gonna go back to PowerPoint, we'll go into full screen, and the next demo comes up as a PowerShell demo in Terminal. Now at this point, the presenter stopped caring about hiding the PowerPoint window and runs the commandlet and heads back over into PowerPoint, you know, and after so much full screening fatigue, now the presenter doesn't even bother going into presenter view and just starts showing the last uh, slide contents in the edit view. And in the last demo, it's a virtual machine showing Azure AD Connect in this case from a Windows Server VM and then back to PowerPoint for the closing slide. All right, so that was a mess, and it usually spans an hour or more in these tech conferences, and you see this all the time. And, you know, I lost a lot of time navigating between Windows and back to PowerPoint and back into my demos. And yes, it would have been ugly still if I used the Alt-Tab keys to navigate between my apps. So let's use desktops then to fix this. So we're gonna start out in the same slides in desktop two then go to our demo. I'm gonna swipe left into desktop one using the control windows left arrow keys and then show my demo. And notice it's been full screen. You never saw the taskbar or any window Chrome. And I'll move back into PowerPoint on desktop two again using the same commands, control windows and the right arrow this time to go right. And then I'll advance my slide to the next demo slide and then slide right to desktop three, show my second demo. And that's another full screen browser as you saw, no taskbar visible. Once that's done, I'm gonna slide right again to desktop four, which has another copy of my PowerPoint that starts where the other one left off. And I'm gonna advance my slide again to tee up my PowerShell demo that's gonna be on desktop five using the new Windows Terminal app. I'll slide over to that. And by the way, it can also enter full screen using the F11 key like you saw in our last video from the browser-based demos that I showed, as you can see here. Now I'll go ahead and run the get command and then I'll slide into demo six, another copy of my PowerPoint that's in the right spot and then move to my last demo intro slide and move right into desktop seven. Here I'm actually greeted by a completely different version of Windows and this is a Windows Server 2019 VM that's running in Azure and I have it full screen. I can interact with it and it looks like it's actually running local uh, for the audience, that is, unless I show the top eyebrow here that indicates it's a virtual machine, then I'll click into a few things and then I'll swipe left one more time and close out my presentation in PowerPoint. So to recap, again, you never saw the taskbar, nothing ever left full screen, and there were no app windows and all demos were live. Nothing was a video demo or pre-recorded. So each desktop was like a little microservice that had just one job to do. And as the presenter, I just had to swipe between them, but how did I configure this sorcery? Well, if you hover over the task view icon in Windows 11, you get this nice compact view to choose which desktop that you wanna go into by clicking on it. Here, I'm actually gonna tap the icon and that shows me all of my desktops and all the apps that are open in each one. Now to see what's in another desktop, I just have to hover over it. I don't click on it. 
and you'll see that your app is open in that desktop or any other apps that might be open in that desktop. So here, if I go to desktop one, you can see that it's my browser and that's logged into the Jeremy account. I'll hover over desktop two and that's the first copy of my PowerPoint slides. Desktop three had the full browser window logged in as Megan. Desktop four had another PowerPoint copy. Desktop five had my terminal window that was full screened using F11. Desktop six had another PowerPoint. And then finally, desktop seven has my full screen Windows Server virtual machine. Now to create a new desktop, you just click new desktop as you'd imagine. And new to Windows 11, you can finally drag and drop desktops and rearrange them. And this would have saved me so many hours in Windows 10. So thank you so much, Windows 11 team. Now, the other thing that you can do now in Windows 11 is change the desktop background per desktop using right click and choose background. Now, just like you choose the different furniture in your rooms, you can set your background image to reflect the mood that you want to be in for that specific desktop. But I'm going to pause here for a second because if you're a competitive conference speaker that looks at scores a lot and really likes to boast that you don't use a lot of PowerPoint in your sessions, first off, I'm one of you and we should probably hang out next time we see each other at a conference. And second, if the concept that you are presenting might benefit from a workflow or architecture image to explain it better before demoing, then you can just set that now as a background image for that desktop and then from there click into your demo. And that's also how you could have avoided using three open copies of PowerPoint like I did in this case. Then you could hand in your slides to the event organizers, like with one or two title slides and all the filler they make you put in the presentations, just like you normally do like a boss. All right, but there's one more thing that I wanna show you and that's moving app windows between desktops. So from the task view, just hover over the desktop that you want and select it. Then drag the app window into the desktop that you want it in and finally, you can also move desktops around using Alt, Shift, Right, or Left arrow keys and rename desktops by right clicking on them and selecting Rename, then typing in the name you want. So that's desktops and Windows 11. You know, this has been a life changer for my live demos over the past few years. And if you're standing in front of a couple thousand people, every little thing helps. Plus, it's so much cleaner for the audience. So hope you found this helpful and maybe through my demo example can see how this could be useful even in your everyday work. If you did, please subscribe to this channel for more tips like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching.